So I actually asked for questions for this video a really long time ago and the reason why I haven't done a video is because to make this kind of video I want to make sure I'm in the best possible headspace. I don't want to film it when I'm having a shit day or I'm going through a shit period because it just doesn't feel very real to me, it feels quite fake to do that. And anxiety is up and down and it's not good for me and a lot of other people that suffer from mental health stuff to talk about it a lot when you're not feeling good because it reminds you about how you're feeling and it's just better if you feel shit to just kind of try and get through that period uh, without over talking about it. I think, in my opinion. I, I wasn't feeling too good recently, um, but I've actually really come out of it over the past few days, which has been so lovely and I'm just so grateful. So today felt like a good day to do this video. I always like to kind of clarify that I am not fully recovered. I am not someone that's like, I'm anxiety free. This is how you get anxiety free. I'm That is not what I'm about at all. I'm happy to give my advice and say what kind of things work for me. I make these videos to make other people feel less alone because I know I'd like to watch a similar video when I was extremely suicidal. So yeah, I just want you to know I'm not fully recovered. I'm definitely still on a journey, uh, an amazing journey, but definitely a, a recovery journey I'm on. So shall we begin? What is the best way to support someone Someone who has anxiety? I think that's such a good question because often we forget those people around us that don't know what to do. For me, when I was really, um, really bad, I wasn't really listening to people. You would get so many different things people would suggest for you to do and it's very overwhelming and you're like, oh, I don't know, do I read that book? Do I go to that therapist? Do I take that pill? All that pill work for that person. It's, it's a bit of a clusterfuck. I think the best thing people did for me was just to be there. Best things that people did for me was just to have someone physically there just with me. Um, I remember one of my really good friends called Royce um, I had a psychiatrist at the time and he would often come with me. I really didn't sleep then, I was on like two hours sleep a night, sometimes not even that. So I was fucking exhausted and often on the way there he would just let me lie my head on his shoulder, on the tube or on the bus. He'd just put his arms around me and I really remember all those things and I just found them so lovely. It's just a little confirmation that people love you and you should stay around for these people and you're not alone. And I think that's the biggest thing with mental health for me is to reassure them that you're not alone. So I don't think we need to get bogged down on giving people advice with anxiety. I think it's more about just making sure they know that you love them and you want them around and you are there for them all the time. What has been your worst experience with stigma around mental health? For example, someone not getting your anxiety. As you know, I'm very honest and very open about stuff. So for me, I've always ignored the fact there's a stigma. I have no problem in telling someone I have anxiety. I have no problem in telling someone I thought about killing myself. I am not someone that really adheres to the stigma, as you can see, because I like to talk about it. But for me, I guess it was more friends of mine that I'm not really friends with anymore. They didn't get it and they didn't understand and I'll give you an example. So you get very exhausted with anxiety and depression. I, I talk more about anxiety by the way because that's more what I know. Even though they're kind of similar, they're very different beasts in themselves. So I generally speak more about anxiety in this video, so sorry about that. With anxiety and depression, I'm sure, it's extremely exhausting you're probably not sleeping that well and also your body is in constant fight or flight mode so you have so much adrenaline it's unreal so you are constantly exhausted and I mean constantly um, so often with friends when I went out or I went to meet them because I wasn't drinking I felt very pressured it was the pressure to stay out when I didn't want to stay out. They'd be like, oh, why are you going home? Why are you so tired? Why aren't you drinking? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? People that have those reactions are just ignorant and they don't understand it because anyone that had a vague fucking clue would not ask someone who was severely anxious why they're so tired and why they're not drinking. If I ever have any friends that pressure me to stay out or pressure me to drink, I don't want to be friends with them because that is not what friends do. How does your family deal with you when you go through a period of anxiety? How do they help you transition out of it? Do you have triggers that cause anxiety? How does your family deal with you when you're going through a period of anxiety? I find that very strange the way you phrase that. It's a bit like, I like some, I don't know, animal that's got rabies. My family, I don't really talk to my family about anxiety ever. I don't think it's helpful for my parents to know if I'm going through a bad period. 
my mum is a massive worrier, uh, so it's not helpful for them to know and they, they can't help me. They don't really know uh, about really kind of severe mental health issues, so it's best off they don't really know anything. With my sisters, I'm obviously not at the point where I, when I feel anxious, I don't go to people anymore. I don't, I'm not like, oh my God, I feel really anxious. What can I do? You need to help me. I can't deal with this because I can deal with it. So I know it, it, eventually things will change and the anxiety will lessen. So I don't depend on them to help me out. But what I do do, ah, do do. What I do do is I do, tell my sisters if I'm in a bit of a shit mood because often when I feel like that I sometimes don't want to talk to anyone and so I tell them that and they kind of know me well enough now they'll just be like okay well we're here if you need me and that's all I need I don't you know that's all I need do I have triggers that cause my anxiety so when I was severely severely anxious uh, and if anyone watching this with severe anxiety you will know that often anything is a trigger you're very sensitive your nervous system is going crazy so sometimes if someone might slam a door you're suddenly like that often everything is a trigger so that question is it's it's a good question because I mean I do have certain triggers I guess but when I was severely anxious everything was a trigger I've got better at dealing with triggers because I know what they are I guess for me it's if someone would talk about how why haven't I met someone yet? Why am I single? What, am I worried about not having kids? Am I worried about dying alone? <laughs> I guess triggers about that kind of stuff, but they don't really affect me that much anymore because I'm so much better and I know myself and I, I'm so much more grounded and calm. So, uh, so no, no. But obviously, when I was all like terrible, everything was a trigger. Is it difficult for you to talk to your parents about your anxiety? Do they understand? How do I explain my parents? So when I was really bad, um, I obviously did talk to my parents because I couldn't work and I needed help with money. Obviously, when you're really, really anxious and suicidal, that is very hard to uh, pretend you're not feeling like that. My mum, I, she obviously tried to understand and be there for me, but she, she didn't really understand. She hadn't been through anything similar. My dad had had a few kind of like mental health things, but not to the degree that I had. I think they both felt extremely um, helpless. I remember one Christmas when I was at my worst and I couldn't sit at Christmas lunch. So I ran up to my room and I just cried. I didn't, I physically didn't, I can feel it's funny talking about it, it really brings back memories, which is why I wanted to make sure I filmed this video on this, like, when I felt good. I remember thinking what, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to feel better, I don't know if I can cope feeling like this anymore. There were so many emotions and thoughts. I remember my dad came up to my bedroom and he didn't know what to say. He just kind of sat there next to me on the bed and I remember him saying like, it's difficult for you, isn't it, sweetie? Like, it's really difficult. Um, my mum actually came with me to one of my psychiatrist visits because I knew they were very against all the medications I was trying. And by the way, if you don't know, I didn't, I stopped taking medication because none of them worked for me. But at that time I was trying Prozac, I think. So I wanted her to meet my psychiatrist um, just because, so they understood why I was trying these drugs. They were obviously very supportive and there for me, but I couldn't really talk to them about it because they just didn't understand. Do you care that working in social media to be an influencer is probably not good for your mental health? Will being famous make it all right? I can't quite understand how someone asks me if being famous will make it all right because I'm not 12 and I don't think like that. The social media one is an interesting one and a lot of people have asked me this. I think for me, I can completely understand how social media has a terrible effect on people's mental health. I understand it because I've experienced it. Instagram is responsible for a lot of terrible thoughts in people's heads. Recovery from anxiety is all about the inside, right? So I personally don't believe that anything on the outside can have a direct influence on my anxiety because it's not that that is the problem, it's how I'm reacting to it. Do you see? So it's inside out, not outside in. For me, What's been helpful is thinking that, so my reactions to things are very different now. I'm obviously human, I still can get jealous and, you know, 
negative comments I definitely can still get. They do annoy me, but I don't think about them like I used to and they don't really get me down. I try and look at the positives of um, Instagram and YouTube and stuff and Instagram is amazing for connecting people and to making you feel less alone and it's been amazing for me to talk about mental health and I feel like I've really helped people on Instagram with talking about anxiety and motivating them to work out and stuff. So there are some such amazing things about social media that we all choose to kind of forget about sometimes and we just concentrate on the bad things and I think uh, that is not right. So I can understand how people think that social media is bad for mental health and I completely think it is to a certain degree, I get that. The stresses in that can, you know, this can be as, as bad as the stresses in a nine to five working in the city or <coughs> you work in a creative job, you're an artist, whatever. I think there's, there's positives and negatives to all jobs so I don't really think too much about that anymore. But I do get your point in your question because I did used to think like, fuck, should I? stop doing social media is my health making my mental health worth it but then you look at the positives and i honestly love i'm so proud of what i create now and what i talk about and how many people i think i've helped so that just makes it all worth it for me man i'm making these answers long i'm so sorry i'm always like oh i've only got like 12 questions better get more no no i think four is enough how do you feel since the fitness thing what are your recommendations for people who want to jump on that bandwagon to recovery First of all, we can't be calling this a bandwagon to recovery. I don't know if you meant it like that, but I don't enjoy how that's phrased. A few things about fitness, right? So I was told a zillion times when I was suffering, why don't you try exercise? Oh, you should try working out. Oh, you should try going to the gym. Oh, you should try a fitness class. I was like, can you all just fuck off? I want to stop talking about fitness. I'm not going to fucking do it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. A hundred and thousand percent fitness has totally changed my life. But when I say that, I don't mean specifically doing boxing has completely changed my life in that ju it's just the boxing part. It's everything for me. Yeah, of course I was getting the endorphins that I was from boxing and that was amazing. But the happiness is always short lived because it's just an hour class, you can't box. 12 hours of every day. Then I got really into yoga, which has been the most amazing balance to my boxing I could have ever desired. But they changed my life because I have all these amazing new fitness friends. Um, obviously working out makes you feel good, but it's just, it's not a cure. It's just a great kind of part of a recovery, I think. So yeah, it's also the friends I've made who are more on my wavelength. They're not party animals that I did. And my sisters and other friends couldn't give less of a fuck about that stuff and obviously then I did a personal training course so now I am a qualified level 3 personal trainer everything is just so amazing that a lot of people that kind of knew me back then they're like I can't actually get over who you are anymore in the most amazing way the thing is I don't want people to look at me and think oh well I'll do that because that's what worked it's not a one rule for all obviously you should definitely try and incorporate exercise because that is a good thing for anyone to do. It will definitely make you feel better. I would just say stick to what you enjoy. It's all about what you enjoy. I tried a zillion different classes. Hated it all. <laughs> uh, and boxing, I, I mean, I knew straight away. It was like you'd met the one guy. That's how I felt about boxing. So yeah. I am fucking depressed. Can't get out of my room. On Zoloft, 50 milligrams for the past two weeks. What would you do in this situation? Getting anxious. Can't see my friends in this state. I would 100% go to your doctor. I think with antidepressants it's 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 trial and error. It's a very it's a very awful time sometimes trying to find an, uh, an antidepressant that works for you. I know because I tried seven and they didn't. If I'd have had a more caring doctor um, maybe things would have been different, I don't know. But for you I would go back to see your doctor. If you are on 50 milligrams on only on for two weeks. I know my friend who was on that. I did, I did try Zoloft actually. My friend was on that and um, it took him 12 weeks to feel better, but obviously everyone's different. So I would 100% go to your doctor. I really don't think I can actually really advise you because I don't know enough about antidepressants and medication to really give you any advice, but please go back to your doctor. And if not, find another doctor. There's actually a really good app that I use. Not sure where you're from. There's an app I used recently, because sometimes it can be hard to see a doctor straight away. 
It's called Push Doctor. It's really good. You can speak to a doctor in minutes and it's an app. So download it if your doctor, if you can't get an appointment with your doctor. Um, but that would be my advice. <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. I had to shut the curtain because I was starting to go a bit blind. <laughs> what are the symptoms of anxiety? God, I mean, okay, I will reel off the ones that I can think of, the one that I've experienced. Insomnia, uh, restlessness, um, tingling in your body, um, a ringing in your ear, sometimes your hearing goes a bit funny, um, derealisation where you feel like you're in a dream a lot, um, depersonalisation where you're, you feel like you're looking down at yourself so you're not you, racing heart, breathlessness, I mean I could go on. Rationally, modern first world people have little to be anxious about. I totally disagree with that. Life is generally safe, social, uh, social, social safety nets exist for health and retirement. Why can't someone feel anxious just rationally think through the illogical f of feeling anxious? I mean, it just doesn't really work like that. <laughs> you, you, you can't, there, there's no rationalising going on in your brain. That's the problem. I also completely disagree with you. I think life is so much more stressful nowadays. I actually feel jealous of my parents. They had no choice. They grew up in a village. They had to marry the first guy. They'll marry the first guy or girl they came across thinking, why not? It's a small village, not many people around. Um, work, there wasn't really many options nowadays. We have so many options that it's overwhelming and social media is fucking everywhere. So you've got that life, that life. Everyone's lives are in your face. So I think life is far worse for mental health um, than it used to be. And as I said, the rational part of your brain has gone, hence why you're anxious. And it gets to a point where it, when you first get anxious, you start getting anxious about little things. And that's just like normal anxiety or like you're having a bit of a shit day at work. Then they get to a tipping point where you're anxious because you're anxious. You're obsessed about trying to fix yourself, working out why you feel this anxious, why you feel this way, what are all these symptoms, I've got brain cancer, um, I have a tumour, I've got lung cancer, I've got something wrong with my heart. I've been through all of these by the way, hence why I'm talking about them. So yeah, there is no rational part of your brain at that point, it's, um, well, completely fucking irrational. I hope that I've answered questions. I think I spoke quite a lot about each question, so hopefully if I didn't answer your question, there are some answers that helped you anyway. As I said, I speak a lot about mental health on my Instagram, so I will leave my link down below. If you want to come and follow me, I am very honest and real on there, because I hate anyone on Instagram that isn't. Well, I don't hate them, but I'm a bit like, jog on. So yeah, come and follow me. Uh, I'd love to chat to you if you have any questions. Um, I really hope this has been helpful. I really like doing these videos every couple of months. It's funny talking about it. It does put me in a bit of a weird mood. I feel in a bit of a weird mood now. You know when you've really dissected something? Um, but I'm going to hot yoga in 10 minutes, so it's fine. I really hope it's been a bit helpful for you. Uh, please let me know down below. And I hope everyone has a lovely day. That's it. Goodbye. Much love to everyone. I think that I'm going to hiding